Hi, everyone. This is Mike Talks Cars podcast. This one might be a little longer than usual. If you read the topic, then you know why. Ford and GM are keeping up the rivalry in predictable fashion. Both companies have recently announced major changes to their heavy-duty pickups, and today I'm going to start with the 2023 Ford Super Duty. GM will be covered in my next podcast. To say that all of the big three truck builders have an obsession with power, towing capacity, and payload capacity would be an understatement. Ford is claiming leadership in all three areas with the release of the new Super Duty trucks. The funny part is that they will not give us numbers until we get closer to the release date of the new trucks. This has always struck me as a bit squirrely for a company to hold back their numbers, but knowing the competition, say Ram with reverence now, the moment those numbers become public, the other guy will raise their numbers to make the claim invalid. GM doesn't seem to care about this game, as they've already released some of their HD trucks numbers. Ford Super Duty will actually have some strong similarities to the 2022 truck. It will be offered in F-250, F-350, 450, 550, and 650 variants. Most of the physical changes in the truck are found in the front. The front end is boxier, and the grille is wider than the previous version. The grille and headlamps are bookended with C-clamp LEDs to highlight the design. Hmm, doesn't that look exactly like GMC, who've used that style cue for years and years? Yeah. Well, under the beefier hood, you'll find one of four available powertrains. All four engines match up to the same 10-speed transmission. There is a new 6.8-liter V8 gasoline engine, which replaces the 6.2-liter V8, offering a promise of more power and refinement to the base engine. There's also the 7.3-liter gasoline for those that need more power, but don't want to step up to either of the two versions of the 6.7-liter Power Stroke diesel. Yep, the diesel comes in regular and high-output variants for 2023. I would love to plug the numbers in right here, but, well, I can't. I assume that the high-output 6.7 turbo diesel is the one that they make the best-in-class power claim for. We'll have to wait and see. There are even a couple of interesting off-road models for this year. An XL off-road will be offered for F250 and F350 4x4s. They will come with 33-inch tires, a lifted air dam, and will have vent tubes for draining water from the differentials. Speaking of differentials, the XL off-road will have an electronic locking rear differential included. The second off-road package will be the Tremor, which has a lift kit, a suspension tune, 35-inch tires, Ford's low-speed trail control cruise control for off-road, trail turn assist, which locks the inside rear wheel to create a pivot point for tight turns on deformable surfaces, and there's even a Dana front axle with limited slip differential to add traction. It doesn't stop with those two packages, though. The higher trim packages for all versions will come with standard four-wheel drive. So Ford has off-road covered fairly well. Let's talk interiors for a moment. The biggest physical changes on the Super Duty will be found in the interior. It's been redesigned to increase comfort, technology, and utility. The dash is more cohesive, with a better horizontal flow than before. The 8-inch, or on the upscale models, the 12-inch touchscreen, are horizontally mounted and fit neatly into the overall decor. The overall design is less industrial than before, and the premium features that are available are pretty impressive. I'm talking about the available max reclined seats, which almost lie flat in case you need a snoozy on the job site or a roadside pullout. The tech is pretty interesting too. The trailer tech is what I want to go over specifically. 
I can't tell you how many times I've wished there was a great way to estimate the tongue weight or kingpin weight of a trailer. Well, Ford makes it pretty easy with an available built-in scale setup to estimate the weight of cargo or trailer tongue weight. Ford has also added blind spot monitoring that works for both conventional and gooseneck trailers. The 360 degree camera system has a module that lets you include your trailer in the bird's eye view. There's even an anti-theft feature available that will notify you right on your smartphone if someone unhitches your trailer from your truck. The trailer tech that has me most fascinated, however, is the Pro Trailer Hitch Assist feature that uses cameras and sensors to locate the trailer hitch and then automatically backs the truck up to align with that coupling point. Yes, it's steering the truck. Yes, even with the tailgate down using a camera mounted in the top of the tailgate. Yes, I think that's pretty cool. How many marriages will be saved by that feature is anybody's guess. How many employees will keep their jobs when the boss yells at them to jump in that truck and hook up to that trailer over there? immeasurable. I like it. Ford has even included a feature in their navigation system that will keep you from driving into places where turns and bridges would not allow your truck and trailer to pass. Now, third-party navigation systems have been doing this for years. It's just nice to see it integrated into factory systems now. Ford's best-in-class claims include the engine I spoke about earlier for power, the F-350 dual rear wheel model will be the payload leader, and the Ford F-450 with the HO Power Stroke diesel will have the highest towing capacity. The truth is, we'll have to wait and see where the numbers come in. For me personally, I don't care who has the best-in-class leadership for power or for payload or for towing. It matters not one tiny bit, because most people don't actually purchase the vehicle with those claims. I only care about whether or not the vehicle I select will do the job I need it to do. Claims are just bragging rights, and I don't much care for those that sit around comparing stats. Just give me a truck that will do what I need, will last as long as I need it to, and won't cost me any more than the job is worth to me. The truth, again with the truth, is that the trucks are an important part of today's world, and there's a reason why they are so popular in today's market. Even the advent of electric won't change much about how we use trucks. And to be completely fair, all of the big three automakers build pretty darn good trucks. Do you have a favorite heavy-duty truck? Tell me what it is and why it's your personal favorite. You can leave me a note in the comment section below or a voicemail at anchor.fm Mike Talks Cars. This is Mike Little signing off for now. Join me for my next podcast where I'll go over the new GM HD trucks. You go have a great